this something going on Facebook and all this stuff. And he's like, look at this church. They're actually playing this secular music. I am so thankful that he has the discernment to know what is right and what is wrong. And he was the one liking those statuses. And I am so proud of him. I believe it. Amen. 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 Glory to God in the highest. Yeah, I know. He used to birds and bite the heads off of birds and say, Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I just leave it lay in the Lord's hands, you know. You, it's just, a, 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 it's another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel, just like Paul t- said. And can I tell you this? Hear me. It's not the foundation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very evident. They've never read the Old Testament, never, never even try to even think about reading the Old Testament, how holy and pure and righteous our God is to get into the very holiness of the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank God for the blood of Jesus where we can boldly come into the throne room of grace. But that boldness don't mean that we take the world into the holy of holies with the Lord. It just won't happen. Can I tell you? Uh, what was it, Nadab, Edab, or uh, one of the others, Moses, or Aaron's brothers, or Aaron's sons went in, put strange fire, and the fire of God licked both of them up. And can I tell you something? I believe that would bring back reverential fear in the house of God real quick. Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord. But I thank God that, hear me, bless the Lord, that let's stay in line with the word. Let's stick to the old gospel ship in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And some say, well, all you got is a bunch of bald head guys and old gray haired people, women. Well, I want to tell you something. We got a pile of young kids in this church. Bless the Lord forevermore. But those kids know more than what some of those preachers that's standing behind the pulpits leading these congregations. And God help them if they don't repent and get back with the Lord. And everybody said amen and amen. Come on, Jeff, you had something? I, I did. It's an affirmation for what you're going to preach tonight. We're living in end times. Yes, we are. There's a great falling away. There's a great divide being um, amongst the churches today. And you're, you've seen it. You see it on Facebook. You see it on being preached from the pulpit. The, the falling away. Man being God. Yep. And uh, uh, that should excite us. Even though it should disappoint us. Exactly. And, and want us to you know reach out to them. But, you know, they, they're going to what they want to hear. Amen. And, uh, you know, sometimes the word is a, it, it's a, it's a it's chastisement. It's a call. Uh, 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 if you don't stay in it, you'll fall for what the world has to offer. <laughs> How true that is. Bless the Lord. How true. What was it Paul, I believe it is, uh, uh, told Timothy? He said, in the last days, perilous times shall come upon the face of the earth and he also began to describe the church world. It said they'd be lovers of their self. That's humanism. Boasters, proud, hear me. Uh, and, and he went right on down the list and described really the, the, the church world of today, the modern church world of today. And uh, the thing of it is, it said they had a form of godliness but denied the power. So you know he's talking about the church in there. And I say, God help us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And, and, I, and I pray, I'm telling you what, I'm praying for people that, that are, are, are in deception that God would somehow in some way get a hold of their hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. Somebody else tonight, praise God. Pastor, I just want to, I'm thankful for this church. And I want to thank God for the church. Because I knew that I could be in and out because there's no way, there's no, yeah. there's no God there. And I see the change in myself. This, this past week, I, the other day, whenever you were talking about being like, I was <laughs> so I am, I am emotional, and I clown for handle, and this past week, we woke up one day with no heat. And um, I normally, I were worried and stressed about it for a whole week. Well, we had full money that was set aside for something else to pay for it. And I said, you know, if I took care of you anywhere in the world, I'll take care of you. Amen. You better believe it says. Yep. He will. No doubt about it. Praise God. Blessings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Somebody else tonight had their hands up over here. Ginger? Um, I'm the guilty one that shared that post about Ozzy. <laughs> um, normally, I don't get involved because I know it's going to be a big old do 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 And I thought, you know what? The Lord's been speaking to me really hard this last couple of weeks. And I just want to say, you don't need Ozzy. God 
will draw you to Him. I have backslidden and God gets on me. He's been on me and on me and on me. And I just keep running, but He won't let me go. And if you truly want to give your heart to God, you will. You don't need Ozzy or you don't need lights and stuff. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to stand out, you know, because I'm thinking, you know, God is, and this is right in Van Wert. And my sister had went to this church, and my sister had said stuff, and she was like, no, 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 you know, I'm like, I can do this to you because you're my sister, you know, we can go at it. <laughs> but um, I just, you know, I just want to say, you know, God has drawn me back, and, and that's all you need. Jesus will, you know, you like you said, you lift Jesus up and he'll yeah, draw I'm men sure unto him. And I just, for the life of me, could not understand. And that was, was my point. Why would a, why would people of God want a song that was from the Prince of Dark? He was known as the Prince of Darkness. Why would you want a Satan? So I don't believe God would, you know, draw you to use this song to lift him up. I just, right. call me ignorant, you know, but mm-hmm. I just... I don't believe it, you know, and I have a right to my opinion. But, exactly. <laughs> but I just want to say that I'm just so thankful for this church and, and for the, the true teachings and because it, it helps me discern what's right and what's wrong. And when I seen that, I was like, no, I know that's wrong. And I thought, yeah, I know what's wrong with my sister. <laughs> I, so, forgive me, but I'm just, I know, where she's, I know where she's getting it from. And I was like, no, no, no. And it's like, you know, when you got a lot of people hooping and hollering, and what really bothered me was at the end of the song, he's like, oh, give a round of applause to the band. Not praise Jesus, nothing. You know, and I thought, you know, this was supposed to be, for, you know, to glorify God, you glorify the band, don't give them a hand. There wasn't nothing about Jesus at the end. I mean, to my knowledge, I mean, did I not see it all or what? But, you know, I did not see it. And I, I had people tell, oh, they changed the words. But I was a big Aussie fan, and... and <laughs> I did not hear any words changed in that. I might be wrong, but I did not hear any words different than what Ozzy spoke. But I just thank God, and you don't need Ozzy. Jesus will lead you to him. Amen. Well, praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know about you, but uh, I do know one. Yes, I'm going to get there, Sherry. Just hold on. I, I knew you was back there. Bless the Lord. But uh, I, I do know one thing. I know that, like Ginger said, if Jesus be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. If we're drawn by entertainment, look at me, it's not going to last. It won't work. It, it said, unless the Spirit of God draws you, you're none of his. It's got to be the Spirit of God. It cannot be the Spirit of the world saving people. Understand me. It's got to be the Spirit of God that saves people in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Part of that too, because um, you know, I used to be in the world, and I was a big heavy metal fan. I followed after my big brother, that was 11 years older than me, that was a drinker and stuff, and uh, followed him because I thought he was a cool big brother, which he is. I mean, he's more level-headed now. But anyways, to get to that, I want to ask you a question because I know people that go to that church, myself too. I know for fact there's two people that was in that worship team that within the last few years have passed away. Now, to me, I thought at first, even though I had concerns about that church and heard, you know, pretty much stay out of that place, isn't that, to you, a sign from God that says, hello, you better be changing things? Because I don't think God's going to take Amber or Amanda out of here. If they're doing I'm, stuff I ain't going to make a judgment on that. That's, that's <laughs> the Lord. I'm not God. But I, but I do know the Word of God. Hear me. And I know the Word of God. And, and when you start... When you start putting God into something that's really worldly, uh, I'm telling you, you're treading, you're treading dangerous ground. God will not be mocked. You reap whatsoever you sow. If we sow to the flesh, you're going to reap from the flesh. And it says if we sow to the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. So we'll just leave it at that. So uh, I don't know about you, but bless God. Let's keep on the path of what we're going in the name of the Lord Jesus, hard times are going to come, and I'll guarantee you, Ozzy's not going to get them through. But Jesus is going to get them through in the name of the Lord. And, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee you they have never heard a message like we preached this morning. I guarantee you, you that ne, they'll never know what, they've never heard a message of what I'm going to preach tonight. Hear me, or teach tonight. 
We're going to talk about the, the seven seals and the seven trumpets and the seven vials of God's judgment be poured out. Well, I've never heard of such a thing. Well, can I tell you something? You need to get in the Bible and read the Bible because it's there. Maybe your preacher's not preaching it, but it's still there, honey. Bless the Lord. And I want to tell you something. If you're in the tribulation, you're going to go through it. And there's no escaping it. Thank God, hallelujah, that I'm going in the rapture in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. And let me say this. And I'll say it over live stream, and there's no such thing as Christian rock. Period, dot, dash, no such thing. No such thing. No such thing as Christian rock. So you know where I take a stand right there. Hello. Bless the Lord forevermore. Why? Because you ain't going to take that stuff into the Holy of Holies with the Lord. It just isn't going to bebop into that, into the presence of the Lord. But you come in with humility and humbleness of heart knowing, hear me, that he holds the key of life and breath in me. Bless the Lord forevermore. So let you get it out of that. Maybe I'm just an old-fashioned preacher. But anyhow, I'm going to stay an old-fashioned preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. And I know this church has been talked about I don't know how many times, but you know what? don't make no difference to me. I just know what the Word says, so I'll stick with the Word. makes no difference, and God just keeps adding to the family up here. Bless the Lord. People get saved and born again and, and uh, just learn of the Word in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, a couple of them out. Uh, Chris? Um, I, we took the um, things that we got Marilyn and took the offering that we gather for her and put that up to Marilyn and Daryl and you know, it was just really good to see them, you know, when they're a part of the church. And then, you know, for they've been gone for how many months, you know, they're being sick. And it was just so good to see them, you yeah. know, with our family. And um, I think Marilyn really enjoyed the visit and everything that was given to her. You know, I think just, she said it made her day. Um, and, you know, Daryl was doing pretty good. He was, you know, very uh, aware, I think, today and told us hi and, you um, one of the pictures that we got them, it's, uh, it's um, got music notes behind it, and on the, the glass part of it says, and I will cling to the old rugged cross. Hmm. And Marilyn took it over to him, and she read him what was on it, and his eyes just welled up with tears. And, I mean, it made all of us cry. And it was just so awesome, you know, that, you know, he may not physically be 100%, but spiritually... He's still 100%. Yeah, amen. It was so good to see Literally. that. Amen. I had got out to see him this week. I've been wrestling with a cold. And I, I was going to go, when was that, Thursday or something like that? I was going to stop in. I said, I better not stop in. I said, that, that's the, the, worst, the least thing that he needs now is somebody transmitting some type of cold or whatever to him, and especially with the weakness that he has and, and what have you. Bless the Lord. So. We just uh, thank the Lord that the women went up there. And I don't know if there's any men went up there. I know there's several men in the in the house or in church here that been up visiting, pray with him, and what have you. And uh, I know it's well appreciated in the name of the Lord Jesus. Marilyn just loves that. Bless God. And if they're not there, she's got a list there that, or a uh, sheet where you can write your name down and and what have you, and just put a little note underneath of it. We put a prayer cloth underneath his pillow. That I, I took that up. Uh, the men and women prayed for that over during the prayer session uh, a couple of Saturdays ago and put it under his pillow. And I told him, I said, Darrell, I said, uh, the prayer group, we just all prayed on this uh, prayer cloth and we're putting it underneath your pillow. And man, no tears just started streaming down his eyes. Couldn't talk to him, eh? but the tears started streaming down his eyes, but he knew what was happening in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Noemi? It's small, but it's big to me. This week, my foot was swollen one of the days, and it was bad, and I can't explain what happened to it, but um, I couldn't even walk on it, and Jared prayed for me before school one morning, and he just held on to that toe, because it was my toe that was hurting, but it looked like my whole foot, and um, I was driving to work, and I just convinced myself, I'm just going to go to the ER, because I didn't care how much it cost, but I'm just going to do it, because I had to work two days in a row, and it just started feeling better, and I just started praising Lord, because, you know, I just thought, well, this is a healing, and Jared prayed for it. It was just awesome how just everything happened that morning, because it was <coughs> instantly relieved, almost 100%, because I could not walk on it. I was 
fighting with Jason the night before because he didn't believe you were like, Fantastic. Anybody else tonight? <coughs> Praise the Lord. Susan? Um, I, have, I have a testimony, <coughs> and I actually have uh, a prayer request. Uh, my testimony was, um, uh, I think it was last, last Sunday, um, after the kid that got out of class last Sunday morning. Um, I'm not sure <coughs> if went on the way back there, but the rest of that day, Emily and Amara were walking around saying, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus. And they're <laughs> just walking around, you know, just, well, we got to go, me and Jesus have to go take a nap. And oh, I can see Jesus. I see him in that reflection over there. I can see him everywhere we drive. Oh, I see Jesus. I see Jesus. I'm like, yeah, he's everywhere. <laughs> she was just, I mean, just never seen her that way. Amen. And um, my, two pra- my prayer request is for... Emily and Amara. Emily, for the last two weeks now, she's had really swollen tonsils back there, and they, it hurts the touch, so I'm going to take her to the doctor. But um, I just want to pray for that, that yeah. swelling goes down. And then Amara today, she cracked her head on the corner of my dresser, and it, it was pretty bad. Amen. We'll just pray for that right now. Father, we just come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for taking care of Emily, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We truly thank you and we praise you, Father. Lord, for Amara as well, I thank you for the power of your spirit just to flow over her in the name of Jesus, touching, ministering in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, let healing flow into both of these in Jesus' name as we truly thank you and praise you ahead of time. And we thank you for a victory testimony to come forth from Susan in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Well, this morning we, uh, we spoke a little bit in the rapture of the church. We spoke about uh, uh, the second coming, or the rapture that we spoke about, great tribulation, uh, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about the battle of Armageddon. I mean, no, we went through quite a few areas, but I just kind of skimmed over them because uh, time wouldn't permit. I mean, um, if, if I get in depth, uh, you know, it's about a five-hour teaching or more, and I know I can't keep people's attention for five hours. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But let me give you just a, a sequence of prophetic events that, that uh, the world's going to experience, and we're going to experience uh, some of them. Bless the Lord. Number one, the rapture of the church. I hope everybody's going to experience that. Bless God, you're going to be taken out of here. That's First Thessalonians four thirteen through 17. And after the rapture of the church, of course, we got the great tribulation, Matthew 24, 21, and 22. You can read that about the great tribulation there. Bless the Lord. But, at, but right, right at the beginning of the great tribulation, we're going to have the, the, uh, the Antichrist will be revealed. And uh, then after a great tribulation, right, the, the ending of the great tribulation, we've got Armageddon. That's the mo- mother of battles. We talked a little bit about that this morning. That's in Revelation sixteen sixteen, And uh, then you've got uh, uh, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, we know that uh, we're going to be with the Lord. He's coming back, hallelujah, with his saints and we're riding on white stallions, bless the Lord, and Hallelujah. Jesus Christ being the captain of our salvation. And Hallelujah. I say this, and I say it again tonight, will you ride with him? Bless the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm going to ride with him in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then right after that comes the millennial reign. Everybody say the millennial reign. That's Revelations 20, 1 through 6. Millennial reign. That's a, a thousand year reign. Jesus will... Rule and reign with a rod of iron. And can I tell you something? Look at me. I will rule and reign with him. Amen. Bless the Lord. I've always said it. I said, said you know, the Lord would probably make me mayor over Scott. <laughs> 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 Bless, the 
But under, we're going to have we're going to have responsibilities down here, folk, right. during the millennial reign. Believe me, Hallelujah to the Lamb. So what we've got, what God has given us, whether it's talents, whether it's ministry, whatever it is, be faithful in what God gave to you, because you is faithful in much. He said, "I'll make you ruler over many things." Bless the Lord forevermore. So understand something, Hallelujah. I I, I use with what I've got. And that the Lord has given to me. And I know that one day, hear me, bless the Lord, God's going to use me greatly and he's going to use you greatly as long as we be faithful to what he has given us in the name of the Lord Jesus. And somebody said, Amen. Bless the Lord. Of course, then we go into Satan being, uh, Satan will, was, will be uh, bound uh, and for a season during the millennial reign. Only peace will rule and reign at that time. And after the millennial reign, Satan will be loosed for a season. Everybody say a season. He'll be loosed for a season. That's Revelations 21 through 3. And, of course, he'll go out to deceive many. Understand something. There'll be many here uh, uh, during the millennial reign. They'll have to serve the Lord Jesus Christ because he'll rule with a rod of iron. But not many. There, there'll be many that really don't believe in him and really don't like his rule and don't like his reign. And uh, once again, Satan will be loosed out of the bottomless, out of the bottom, uh, out of the prison that he's in, not, not the bottomless pit, but uh, he'll be loosed for a season to go out and deceive once again. And many people will be duped by the, the devil himself. But can I tell you, there'll be also a final battle, Satan cast into the lake of fire. And somebody said, goody, goody, gumdrops. That's where he's headed for. Revelations 27 through 10 tells you that. And then after that, the end comes, a new heaven, new earth, and a new Jerusalem. Revelations 21, 1 through 8. And I say, praise God, man, we've got a blessed hope that awaits us as, as being children of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. We win. You stick with Jesus and we win in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. But let's talk a little bit here about the Great Tribulation. Everybody say the Great Tribulation. Of course, we know in Matthew, as I said this morning in the book of Matthew, it talks about Great Tribulation such as the world has never seen before. And, it, and, it, and Scripture says, except that time be shortened, hear me, except it be shortened, all humanity would die during the Great Tribulation. So there's a set period that it will only last a certain amount of time. Matter of fact, it would be seven years. The last three and a half years is going to be horrible, horrible living. But uh, anyhow, let's look at Revelations, if we would please. Revelations, the sixth chapter. I want to show you just a little bit of what's going to happen in the Great Tribulation and Hopefully you don't want to be around and hopefully you're not going to be around. We are going to be in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Bless the Lord. Let's start with the fifth, uh, fifth chapter first of all. And I'll run down through that real quick. I'll read through it. And he says, but I, and, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Now understand, John standing here and seeing this vision. And he said, I wept much. John saying, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, uh, the book neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> oh, that's my kingsman redeemer. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And understand something, these are judgments of the Lord. I've said this this morning, today we know him as Savior, tomorrow he will be our judge. He's the one that's going to be judging. Are you hearing me, child of God? He's the one that went to the cross to die for, for the sin of mankind and the rejection of his atoning sacrifice. Hear me, the only thing left is the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm glad my sin is washed 
by the blood of the Lamb. I'm glad I applied the blood to the doorpost of my heart, which secures me a place in heaven in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. And the sixth verse, and behold, or be, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into the earth. Of course, he's talking about the perfection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Seven means perfection. Everybody say perfection. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Understand something, folk. Hallelujah. When we pray, look at me. How God bottles our prayers up in a bottle. And can I tell you this? It's a sweet smell in his nostrils when we begin to pray and intercede for lost humanity or for, for revival to flow through, the, the, through this nation or through the church house. Hallelujah. And they sung a new psalm saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations, and had made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Somebody ought to get happy about right now in the name of the Lord. Look at me. We're going to reign as priests and kings. Do you realize positionally we are, we are reigning as priests and kings? Christ shares with you and I. Think of this. He don't have to do this, but he did. He shares all victories unto, uh, for you and for me. Bless the Lord forevermore. We'll rule and reign alongside of our kinsman redeemer, Jesus Christ. Man, what a, what a time it's going to be, folk. Praise the Lord forevermore. But can you imagine John's having this vision? He's seeing this. He's seeing what's going on in the heavenlies. We can't see right now what's, what's happening, but we can see through the word of God, <coughs> excuse me, of some glimpses of what's going on in the heavenly of heavenlies. Praise the Lord. You can see the elders praising and glorifying the King of kings and Lord of lords. Can I tell you there's a whole lot of praise and magnifying of God in heaven right now. <coughs> Our loved ones that have went on before us, look at me. They're praising and glorifying the King of kings and the Lord of lords right now. One day you're going to be doing the very same thing in the name of the Lord. Praise God. But it said they sung a new song. Uh, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred tongue and people and nations, and hast made us, uh, our God, or made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them as was ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands and thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard, I heard, uh, heard that are that are in them heard saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that setteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that lived forever and ever do you realize hallelujah john seeing you here look at this where he says this he said that there was round about the throne, hallelujah, of the elders and beasts, and there was ten thousand times ten thousands times ten thousands of thousands. Look at me. I'm one of those thousands. And I know that you're one of those thousands if you've been born again. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. And the sixth chapter says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and him that sat upon him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth to conquer and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. 
And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. And when I had opened the fist, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black and as soft uh, sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it, as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us for the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? It's called the great tribulation. God's judgment poured out, hear me, upon the sin of this world. Can I, you know, a lot of times we think of some of the things that's going on in the world today. And a lot of the sin that's going on in the world today. And it's, it looks like they're getting away with a lot of stuff. And sometimes you think, God, how in the world? And I've done it. I've, you know, I prayed to the Lord and I said, God, how long will you wait, you know, to, to pass judgment? Because they're blaspheming your name. They're coming against you. They're not coming against us, but they're coming against you and blaspheme you. But can I tell you something? Hallelujah. If there's no repentance, that time is coming. Hear me, it's already set in the ballots. It's already set on his prophetic time calendar. Only he knows, but I do know one thing. I'm not going to be here when that takes place in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you better pray to God that you're not here. Hallelujah. But the Lord, God, his judgments revealed, it's revealed in successive series. The first is the seven seals. We see that in the second, the seven trumpets and the third The seven bowls are vials of God's wrath. And I want to tell you something. Those seven bowls, I've read that of God's wrath. Those are the most horriblest times, hear me, when that judgment is poured out, those those seven bowls of God's wrath. But as you look at the seven seals, which first of all, we see the four horsemen that come out as the first four seals are opened up. And of course, you know, when you look at the first horseman that comes out, it talks about, uh, and of course we know the horsemen, they represent God's judgment upon a corrupt and evil society. That's what, that's what I, I already said, but, but that's what it is. But the first seal is a white horse. Everybody say a white horse. White horse. And some believe that this is, this, this is the Lord, but this is not the Lord. This is the Antichrist. This is the beginning of tribulation. Hear me, child of God. That's why I say, hear me. We're not going to be here. Before the Antichrist can be revealed, look at me, hallelujah, he that withholds him must be taken out. Can I tell you this? Who is that he or she? It's us. It's the church. The true blood-bought church is snatched out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say, bless God forevermore and evermore. I don't want to be here when all this is going on. Listen, hear me. 
whether you believe in pre-trib, whether you believe in mid-trib, or whether you believe there's no trib at all, I want to tell you something. Hear me. There is going to be tribulation because not such as the world has never seen. And how do I know that? Because the Bible just says so, and I just read it to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. But the thing of it is, I want to escape it. I said, I want to escape it. Bless the Lord. And I know God will see to it that we do escape it. Bless the Lord. But we see the first seal. It's a white horse. And, uh, of course, we know this white horse is the Antichrist, and he's the one that's going to be revealed. But if you notice the, the white horse, when he comes out, he has a bow, but no arrows. Hear me, and the Bible says he goes out and conquers nations. How in the world can he conquer nations? Well, Daniel eleven twenty one says this, And his estate shall stand up, shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give their, their honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. In other words, his figure of speech, he will, he will, he will win them over by just, just speaking to them, hear me, flattering words. And some would say, how in the world could that possibly be? I don't know. Look at Hitler. Hitler, look how many people he swayed over. Think of it. And they pledged allegiance to him. Why? It, some would say with Hitler, it seemed like they was, he, they was mesmerized when he would begin to, to speak. And folk, I want to tell you something. Understand something. The Antichrist, he will be Satan's man of the time. He will be anointed of Satan himself. Bless the Lord. But uh, there's many names given to the Antichrist. In Daniel 8, 9, he's the little horn. We see that, in, as I said in Daniel 8 and 9, Daniel 8, 23, 25, in the latter times of their, kingdom, uh, of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce continence and understanding, dark sentences, shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall... Pro Look at that, how that's worded. He shall destroy wonderfully. Uh, how in the world can you, you destroy somebody... Wonderfully, it's kind of like uh, a frog uh, in a uh, boiling a frog and put him in hot water. Well, you don't make the water hot, but you put him in the cold water and then turn it up little by little by little by little. And next thing you know, you got frog legs. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And that you know, he's peaceably. He, matter of fact, he might be a Nobel Peace, Peace Prize. Hear me. That's uh, that's what he you know. And and his flatteries are just astound people. And, uh, of course, then and the, and the devil will, will give him power to where he can call fire down out of heaven. He can do all different types of miracles. And, of course, we know that, look at me, uh, Israel is looking for a Messiah, and they're going to accept the Antichrist wholeheartedly. And I believe the Muslims are going to accept him wholeheartedly. As I said this morning, they're looking for the Mahdi to come in, that man that's lost out in the desert somewhere, where, and uh, they're looking for him to come in, Hear me, and uh, both are looking for, uh, you know, uh, the, the deliverer, exactly. Hallelujah. But can I tell you this? I've already found him. <laughs> I said, I've already found him, not already found him, but I'm in the presence of him at this period of time in the name of the Lord. Praise God. But, but he, sh uh, he said he should be full of a, a, a transgressor, are come to full, a king of fierce continents, and understanding dark sentence shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Of course, he's, he's anointed by the devil. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy, also he causes craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by, by peace shall destroy many, he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Can I tell you something? I'm glad I'm riding with the Lord, and I'm glad I'm on the Lord's side. In Revelation 13, 1, he's called the beast. Revelation 13, 16 through 18, and he causes all both small, great, rich, and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy, sell, save, save he uh, who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him 
who has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Hear me. Without that number upon you, you cannot buy or you cannot sell if you're gone during the Great Tribulation. And understand, there'll be a lot of Christians saved during the Great Tribulation. And, uh, uh, and we know this because, and, and I'll show you this in Scripture just a little bit down along the line here. But understand something, hear me, there'll be Christians saved, but it will cost them dearly. The Antichrist will hunt them down, hear me, like a hound hunting down a, a coon. And, uh, and he will slay them. And understand, they can't buy, they can't sell. Look at me. It's going to be a horrible time. Think of the, the women, hear me, that, uh, that's feeding little kids and what have you, and they can't buy food for them. How horrible of a time will that be? Stop and think of that a second. Bless the Lord. But anyhow, he'll come in, and he has a bow but no arrows, and he's going to win the world over, that area there, over by simply talking to them. How many has ever been around somebody that's whiffed in their talk? Are you hearing me? They're swift in your talk, in their talk. I don't know about you, but I can get around car salesmen. <laughs> or TV <salesmen>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> car salesmen, man, I mean, tell you what, they'll get you in that car and say, boy, the, you look good in that thing. And I'm telling you what, smell that newness in that car. Isn't that wonderful? <coughs> but they don't tell you about the payment on there. Not until you sign your John Henry, and then they say, you know, and uh, what have you, and after the smell and everything's gone away, you think, what in the world did I do? What did I do? But hear me. Hallelujah. You know, they're good at talking. Um, there was a guy that I went to school with, and, and he was swift at talking to women. And I thought, man, you know, he was the ugliest guy on the face of the earth. <laughs> but I'm telling you what, he had a way with words. Uh, believe me. I mean, he had a way with words. And he'd go up to a woman and tell the woman just what they wanted to hear. And man, I mean, he would... He would lay it on them, I mean thick, and they'd just sit there and just swoon over what he's saying. He said, hey, you wouldn't mind if I'd have a date with, oh, yeah, man, let's go out. <laughs> Bang, he'd go out, and I'm sitting there scratching my head thinking, why in the world would they want to go out with that ugly guy? <laughs> well, it's his words that he was speaking to them. Words have an effect. How many know that? Bless the Lord. And the Antichrist, look at me, he's going to be way better than what this guy was. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But he'll win the world over just by his flatteries, by his figure of speech. The second seal opened, the red horse rider. It represents war and violent death. The tribulation will be a time of murder, violence, war, because peace will be taken away. Stop and think of this. You know what? We think it's bad now. But can you imagine, hear me, can you imagine what it's going to be when tribulation comes about? How many people are, got killed in, in uh, Chicago over 700 some people, I think it was, or something like that last year. Can you imagine? It just magnifies and intensifies more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. The third seal opened. The black horse rider symbolized famine. Everybody say famine. Basic necessities of life will be scarce. Price is extremely high. Hunger will spread throughout the world. There's been many famines, hear me, child of God, throughout the, the earth, but this will be the famine of the, the mother famine of all famines. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The fourth seal opened was as a pale horse rider symbolizing death and hell. It will be a terrible intensification of war, famine, death, plagues, diseases, and evil beasts. Man, I'm telling you what, just reading that makes me don't want to be there. Amen. I don't want to be there. Hallelujah. You see, this judgment will be so fierce that one-fourth, think of this, one-fourth of human race will be killed. <laughs> you know what? A lot of people have never heard any teachings like this. Never heard this at all. Matter of fact, you know what they do? They don't even teach revelations. But brother, I want to know what's going to happen in the future. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I believe everybody needs to know what's going to happen in the future. And can I tell you this? The Bible tells us what's going to happen in the future. I've got a good, look, I've got a good outlook at the future. 
But those that don't have Christ in their hearts and in their life, look at me, there's nothing but disaster lays ahead of them. And I pray for them that they give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, before the, before the rapture takes place, and the rapture can take place at any time. And everybody said amen. Because after the rapture, look at me, hallelujah, you're going into the tribulation. Bless the Lord. Let's look at the fifth seal. It said, there's, these are the souls of them that have been slain because of the word. Antichrist will slaughter many believers. Their blood will, uh, will cry out to the Lord for vengeance. And God tells them to be patient. Hallelujah. Many more will be killed. And uh, some will be given the opportunity to be saved, as I said, during the tribulation. But uh, we'll, 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 it will cost them horribly. Horribly. It will cost their lives through the tribulation. Your life will be at stake. Stop and think of this. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands will be slaughtered. Have an understanding that the Antichrist will do that. Just like Hitler did to the Jews and try to destroy the Jews. He'll make Hitler look like a Sunday school picnic. I don't know about you, but understand something. I'm glad I'm on the Lord's side. I'm glad I know, hear me, where I'm going in the name of the Lord. And some would say, we're going through the tribulation, Pastor Martin. You might, you know, I said, well, forget it. Well, you might go through it, but I'm not going through it. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome to it, boys. I don't want to experience the judgment of God because it's not for us to experience the judgment of God. Hallelujah. Judgment will be poured out on the ungodly that have not accepted the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Bless the Lord. But uh, as I said, some will be given the opportunity to be saved, but it's going to cost them their lives. Hear me. I don't know about you, but you've seen it on television. You see over in Iran, Iraq, uh, over in Nairobi, um, a lot of the, the countries in Africa, you see the, the Muslims, you know, ICE is literally shop, chopping the heads off of Christians. And I said it this morning, I seen a newscast, 90,500 90, Christians was slaughtered by ISIS last year, was martyred by ISIS last year. Stop and think of that a second. That's more, hear me, than what was in biblical times when Nero was slaughtering the Christians back in his heyday in, in the Roman Empire. When he'd take Christians and put them, wrap them in oily rags and put them on stakes and, and stake them up on his pathway up to his palace and then he'd light them on fire at night so that he could see his pathway. Think of that. And, they, and the reason why is because they was Christian. I'm telling you what, hear me, it'll be a horrible time here on the face of the earth for people and Christians that saved during that time to, to go through the great tribulation. But uh, as I said, we, uh, we know that there will be 144,000 Jews saved. Am I right on that? 144,000 Jews. Of course, we see this in Revelation 7. Let's look at this once. Revelation 7, 1 through 12. And he says, After these things... I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Nathanim were uh, sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Iskar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. 
And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worship, saying, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor the heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And somebody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Some has, some has asked the question, of course we've seen there that, that 144,000 is the 12 tribes of, of uh, Judah. And of course the... the uh, uh, Help me, the kingdom of Jehovah's Witnesses, they think they're the 144,000. But can I tell you something? They got more than 144,000, so they made a little bit more. But uh, understand something, hear me. It's the 144,000 out of the 12 tribes of Judah, out of the 12 tribes of Israel. Bless the Lord forevermore. And plus there'll be others on top of that that will get saved as well. But understand something, it costs them dearly. Their heads being chopped off, whatever, bless the Lord. As they stand before the Lord God, and God clothes them with white raiment, these are they that have come out of great tribulation. Bless the Lord forevermore. I don't know about you, but look at me. Hallelujah. We'll probably stand at attention as they, they receive the martyr's crown in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. And as I said, uh, you know, this morning, that newscast, I said there's 90,500 <coughs> martyrs for Jesus Christ last year. That's an astounding amount of numbers. Look at me. Those are our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and one day we'll stand alongside of them. Ought not we have a heart for our brothers and sisters in these third world countries and pray for their safety and security? Hear me? That God come alongside them. Some of these are pastors that's preaching the gospel. They're, they're, some of their families are left behind. Some of them hear me. They take their kids out and tell their parents they're going to, they, you know, if you don't renounce Christ, we're going to cut the heads off of your children. And they, you know, they won't renounce Christ and they got to stand there and watch their children be beheaded. I don't know about you, but that'd be horrible. And we, you know what? We, we're so spoiled here in the United States of America. If somebody takes our seat, we get angry and aggravated. And say, man, I'm just, just being persecuted. Somebody took my seat. But can I tell you this? We don't know what persecution is. But hear me. These, these know what persecution is. But understand something. There's great revival going on in these Muslim nations. Hallelujah. When the church is persecuted, look, to, look at, read the word. When the church began to be persecuted, look at me, it spread them out. And can I tell you, hundreds and thousands of people was one to the Lord Jesus. Right now, in the Muslim countries, hear me, there is a great revival taking place because of these that gave their life for gospel's sake and will not renounce Christ. Hallelujah. God is giving them visions like almost like, like uh, the Apostle Paul and his Damascus Road experience, giving them dreams, visions, hear me, Bless the Lord, revealing unto them, I say thank you a million times over, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's the answer to ISIS, hear me, is that God get a hold of their hearts and lives and change them from the inside out, in Jesus' name. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But uh, some would say, what about, what about somebody that was a Christian and they missed the rapture? Will they, will they risk their life or will they get right in the tribulation? Good question to ask. I'm glad I asked it. Will they get right in the rapture? You know what? As I said, you know, we know that there's going to be that 144,000. But 
I don't believe that they'll have a second chance in the, in the tribulation. Well, why is that, Pastor Martin? Why don't you believe that? Well, Scripture says this in 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 and 12. It says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Hear me. It's a fearful thing, understand me, to throw God out the window after you've been saved. And of course, look at me. You know I am not a Calvinist. I'm an Arminianist. I know what I'm talking about now. But Wednesday night I was trying to get it out of you who it was. My mind done slipped me. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And somebody said, well, as a Calvinist, somebody, you know, and somebody said, well, it's Baptist. <laughs> I used to be in Baptist. I, that simply means once saved, always saved. No matter, once you got saved, hear me, no matter what you do, look at me, you're sealed. You can go out and commit fornication. You can go out and commit adultery. You can go out and commit murder. And you're still going to heaven because way back yonder, you give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, that might sound good, but it's not Scripture. It's not Scripture. And can I tell you something? Look at me. Scripture here says that God would send them strong delusion to where they believe a lie. Understand me. Hallelujah. The time to get in is now. Not wait around and see, well, wait and see, well, and, you know, I've heard people say, well, I'll just get right in the great tribulation. I said, <laughs> you know, what a joke. I said, you get your head cut off during the great tribulation. I said, you can't stand for Christ and you ain't even in the tribulation. That's a joke. They're just trying to fool themselves. Are you hearing me? So the best thing to do is get in now and stay in, be anchored and steadfast and unmovable, hallelujah, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And of course we know that Scripture says that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They loved darkness more than they loved light. Hallelujah, hear me, child of God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Amen. Fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. I don't know about you, but I thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that Jesus' blood has assuaged the judgment of God off of my life in Jesus' name. I accept that atoning sacrifice into my heart and into my life. I applied it to the doorpost of my heart. Hallelujah. Therefore, no judgment will be passed upon me except for the judgment seat of Christ. And that will not be a judgment of condemnation, but for rewards. The great white throne judgment is for those that have never accepted Christ. They'll stand before the Lord and hear him say this. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I've never known you into everlasting destruction. Well, God's not that type of God. I've always heard that God is love. God is love. Matter of fact, he loved you so much, he sent his son to die so you don't go to hell. But you've got to apply it to the doorpost of your heart. And if you don't look at me, you're on your way to hell. Understand me? And there's no second chances <coughs> after you die. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Understand and look at me. Many will stand at that judgment seat. Hallelujah. In Matthew 7, 21 and 23, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Hear me. Now, you know, this once saved, always saved. Look at me, but it says this, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. In other words, if you're not obeying the word of God, you ain't going to heaven. I don't care if you call yourself Christian, what do you call yourself? Hear me, you're not going to heaven if we don't obey me. The Lord says this in Scripture, Why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I tell you to do? That's very plain. It don't take us rocket scientists to figure that out. Bless God. As a matter of fact, he said, many will say to everybody, say many. 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in your name? Have not we cast out devils in your name? And done many wonderful works in your name? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Hallelujah, are you that who take pleasure in sinning. They loved, look at me, darkness more than what they love, light. Hallelujah, I ask the question, bless God. Do you love the truth? I said, do you love the truth? Sometimes the truth hurts, but I love the truth. You know why? Because it sharpens me. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The sixth seal is opened. The Bible says a great earthquake takes place, one that shakes the whole world. Stop and think of this. I've never been in an earthquake. Well, I take it back. I was in just small ones here or there and uh, uh, do a little bit of rattling and, and, and what have you. But those that have been through some great earthquakes, big ones, I'm telling you, you know, they're very scary. But it says that every mountain and island will be removed from its place. Stop and think of this. That earthquake will be so horrible that, look at me, Hawaii will be gone. Sink. Islands will be gone. I'm glad I don't live on an island. Well, it makes no difference. I ain't going to be here anyhow. (laughs) But those who are living on an island... Get off of it. (laughs) But it's still going to affect people. That's all there is to it. It says every mountain, every island will be removed from its place. Think of that. Someone say, you actually believe that? I actually believe that. Do you realize when the Lord comes back on the second coming, he will light on the Mount of Olives. And when he lights on the Mount of Olives, there will be such an earthquake that will split that mountain asunder. That's the kind of God that I serve. Hallelujah. Can you give him a hand clap of praise? Glory to the Lord. But it says every mountain island will be removed from its place. The sun will grow dark and the moon blood red. The stars will fall from heaven. These stars, I believe, will be meteorites. And you know as well as I do, hear me, uh, scientists even now, you know, they said uh, there's times that earth has just been missed, you know, by meteorites, and we know that at one time it has been hit by meteorites. If you go out to Arizona, I've been out there. Anybody have been out to Arizona and you see those big craters out there? Or just small meters, meteors have fallen and hit and big crevices in the ground where they had hit? And, and understand something, when these come forth or when those uh, go... Uh, they, they claim one of the largest recorded meteorites was uh, 65,000 pounds or 30 tons. Can I tell you if something like that during uh, like that would hit now, understand me, it would be like a nuclear bomb going off. And can I tell you, understand during tribulation, they'll be greater than what, <coughs> what the, the biggest was recorded. And even now, as I said, scientists are scared that you know, America might get hit one of these days by a meteorite. I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. But I do know one thing. It's going to happen. As sure as I'm standing here, it's going to happen. How do you know? Because I just read it to you. I <coughs> just read it to you. Revelation six fifteen and 16, back to that. It says that the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the, the ro- uh, hidden in caves and among the rocks of <coughs> the mountains, they called for the rocks and the mountains to fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who Who can stand it? Stop and think of this. Hallelujah. Even then, you know, they they cry for the rocks to hide them and fall upon them. So they don't be able to look at the face of the Son of God. But when you get into the other other, uh, seals of trumpets and, and vials, you'll see that even though these things are being poured out upon them, blistering sores all over them, locusts with the, uh, the sting of a scorpion's tail and, and faces like a man's face and, face and teeth like lions. Hear me, stinging people, and, and they won't die. 
and yet they still blaspheme the name of God. That's how hard, hard-hearted they are. And some would say, really? Is that really in the Bible? <laughs> yeah, read the Bible. It's there. Well, I've never understood any of that. You can, it's simple. Scripture interprets Scripture. All you got to do is read the book of Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelation and tell you everything about it. But you, you see, the thing of it is, people are ignorant of the Word of God. They've never heard anything like this. Some people have never heard any, uh, of stuff like this. Never heard of the rapture of the church. Never heard of great tribulation. Never heard, hear me, child of God, of the second coming or the battle of Armageddon. Never heard of those things. You know why? Because preachers won't preach on it because they don't know anything about it. But understand something. It's to be studied. It's to be taught. It's to be learned. And it's to be taught to the people and the congregations to know what holds the future so that you can tell people, hey, you need to get right before the Lord before it's too late. I don't want to see anybody go through the great tribulation. don't want to see anybody go to hell, even though people have told me to do that. And some of you have had that as well. But can I tell you something? I say, no, thanks. I once was headed that direction, but no more. I'm headed that way. I'm going to heaven. Bless the Lord. You can have all the hell you want. Understand me. Bless God. But I've applied the blood of Jesus Christ to the doorpost of my heart. Therefore, look at me. You call it what what you want, escapism. You call it what you want. Hear me. Hallelujah. The elevator ride in the sky. I call it, hear me, the rapture of the church. I'm not going through the tribulation because it's not appointed unto God's people to suffer the wrath of God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm secure in the hands of our Savior and our Lord. Praise the Lord. Open it up for, it's 730. I'll open it up for <coughs> questions, answers. Bless God. Maybe I don't know him. Somebody else might know him here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Any questions? Anybody know about the book of Revelations? What did I teach on just now? Right. Exactly. They won't, won't read it. Matter of fact, I heard one faith teacher say this. I don't read the book of Revelations. Ain't no need to read it. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because if you read the book of Revelations, it will upset their apple cart in their teaching. Period, dot, dash. So therefore, they'll stay away from it. And as I said, one, one faith teacher said this. If you want to get messed up, just go ahead and read the book of Revelations. If you really want to get messed up, just stay away from the Beatitudes that Jesus taught. That's the generation we're in, folk. That's the teachings that's coming from the pulpits nowadays. And I say, God help us. Go ahead. You know what's amazing, Pastor Terry, is you know, we've started to study on Wednesday nights in Daniel. But how many years ago before the book of Revelation was ever written, that Daniel could prophesy at exactly. the end of time. Ezekiel could prophesy at the end of times and pull us all together to let us know what's going to happen. In the right around 700 years they prophesied before. You know. yeah, that, that's amazing. Right down to the T. That's God. And you know what? You know, the Bible says this. Uh, as I said this morning, you know, I believe we're the terminal generation. The Bible says this, that man's, man's knowledge would increase in the last days but his heart would wax cold, cold towards God. Right. Why? Because they make God of themselves. How many know technology has brought us a long way, honey? It has brought us from the wagon wheel, look at me, hallelujah, to the wagon wheel all the way up to spacewalks, spaceships. I can talk to brothers over in Africa and New Zealand just like they're sitting right in here, this congregation, right now, over live streaming. We're talking to people in England, New Zealand, Africa. That's amazing to me. They couldn't do that 100 years from now. Something has happened since, uh, what, what, since uh, Edison discovered, or no, who was it, Franklin discovered electricity. Something happened to man's knowledge and wisdom, and all of a sudden, things started 
growing, uh, knowledge began to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Hallelujah. Then we got, you know, come along with the cars. Who was it? Henry Ford made the cars. I believe it was discovered the cars, whatever. Locomotives, steam engines. And man, I'm telling you what, it's just increased more and more and more. We can put hundreds and thousands of dollars in some of this computer stuff, and tomorrow it's, it's out of date. Gone. Because they got something more powerful. It just keeps escalating and escalating. Can I tell you, that's all been predicted in the Bible. Every bit of it. Which tells me the Word of God is truth. It's true. That's all there is to it. Bless the Lord. Could you imagine if the Wright brothers could come back and see one of these big Boeing jets? Or see one of the, what is it, the modern day uh, uh, war planes that we've got, the jets that we've got. They'd come back and look at this, that stand out there and go, never get off the ground. No way. And man, when them jet engines would take off, they'd probably sit there and go, what in the world? Unbelievable miracle of miracles for that thing to get off the ground. Folk, we've come a long way in just a hundred years. Can you imagine if the Lord should tarry another hundred years? I remember back when I was a kid, they had a, a, a cartoon program called the Jetsons. Do you remember them, the Jetsons? They'd fly around these little rocket ships, you know, from house to house. And can I tell you something? I don't think we're far from that <coughs> today. I don't think we're far from that. We're not far-fetched. Some of these cartoons that they had, and cartoon characters, some of the things that they had way back then, you'd think, man, you know, this is just ridiculous. But now it's reality. It is reality. It amazes me how much uh, uh, knowledge has literally exploded over the last 25 years, which tells me this, we're the terminal generation. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord forevermore. Uh, Marvin gave me a book about the Indians around here, and, I've, and uh, uh, a guy that, uh, you know, he was uh, uh, a young man traveling across the United States once that wanted to explore uh, you know, the countryside and what have you, and I've been reading it, and, I, and it's a book you can't put down because I love history and uh, love to read, you know, some of the things that, that he was going through and some of the Indians and what have you, you know, how that they was going to make war against the white man because the white man was ended up uh, taking over and all different types of things, and it talked about all the Indians that was in this area. And very interesting. I hadn't got into that part yet, but it's very interesting but anyhow, could you imagine if you would put one, <laughs> you would put a, 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 a smart missile and shoot that towards them. Could you imagine what they would say? That's the biggest, biggest arrow I've ever seen in my life. It just blow their mind back in the 1800s. Can I tell you this? There is an explosion of knowledge that has gone forth. Well, my Lord, we can get new knees now. We can get new hearts. We can get new lungs. We can get new body parts. It's like going down to auto part and getting a part for your car. That was never heard of. Can I tell you something? A common cold back years ago, go to a lot of these graveyards and look at some of the, the women and men and kids and boys and girls. Look at me. They died in their early 20s and 30s and 40s and they thought that was being old, Fred. And they died of just a common cold. Think of it. <coughs> now they got all different types of medications and different things and we thank God for that because if it wouldn't have been for that, some of us will be in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> but I'm telling you, hear me. We're seeing knowledge just explode like never before. And, you know, it's just remarkable how that everything in this word, when it comes to prophecy, is being fulfilled and has been fulfilled 
for the rapture of the church to take place. I don't believe we have to wait for any more prophecy to be fulfilled for the rapture to take place because all things have been fulfilled for us to be taken out of here. And can I tell you, one glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to fly away in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can we give him a hand, clap of praise, bless the Lord. Any other questions or you want to add to? Bless God before we dismiss tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All minds clear, hearts clear. Stand your feet then, if you would, please. Bless the Lord. Jeff, go ahead and close us in prayer, if you would, brother. Yeah, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. Lord, we've set at your feet and learned from your word. Lord, you have broadened our horizon. Lord, you, you've imparted wisdom into our lives, Lord, as we continue this faith walk with you. And Lord, we know that we know something, Lord, that we can be confident that the things that's going to be ahead of us, Lord, that you're going to take care of. And, and so, Lord, as you prepare your church for what lies ahead, Lord, uh, make them battle ready, Lord, ready for the souls, Lord, that they're going to be one for you and, and for those opportunities that they're going to get to speak into people's hearts. And, and so, Lord, that they'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but, Lord, that they'll be true uh, um, warriors and, and prepared to do your bidding. As we continue, Lord, to draw from your word and give us wisdom, let it apply to us our lives. Bless your people as they go out this week, Lord, and give them opportunities to spread your good news and touch those lives that need to be touched. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ.